Um, so Elon Musk's AI company, XAI, they just rolled out an early preview of Grok2 and the Grok2 Mini AI models. Now, XAI says that an early version of Grok2 was actually able to outperform both Claude 3.5 Sonnet and GPT-4 Turbo on the lmsys.org chatbot leaderboard. But the improvements in the model, in its reasoning, its code, its language capabilities, these are not what have everyone talking. Because that's been overshadowed a bit by the model being linked now to an image generation model called Flux, which we talked about last week. This allows users on X to create AI-generated images. Now, what's raising eyebrows here and getting a lot of not-so-positive attention is that there apparently aren't that many safeguards, if any, in Grok's image generation capabilities right now. Grok does not seem to be refusing any type of prompts involving real people. It's not adding any type of watermark to its output. And to put it lightly, this has led users to create some very controversial content on one of the largest communications platforms in the world. <laughs> so there's been a ton of threads being shared of images of political figures in compromising situations. And while Grok claims to have certain limitations on like pornographic or excessively violent imagery, the rules, according to The Verge, appear very inconsistent in practice. So there's basically a flood of a ton of crazy AI-generated imagery that is anywhere from really funny to very profane and very offensive. Elon Musk, known for his stance on freedom of speech, defended the release, calling it an, a, quote, intermediate step for people to have some fun while XAI develops its own image generation system. Now, Paul, I've seen some of the, let's call these questionable image results that people are creating. Am I wrong in saying this seems just like a recipe for disaster? Yeah, I, but it's what Musk does. He pushes the, the boundaries and um, invites lawsuits. And, you know, I think it keeps him entertained and motivated to do what he's doing. I, I don't know. It's, it, it is shocking how, uh, how good it is at reproducing people and characters mm -hmm. like it, it it'll do my first test was like disney characters as an experiment and it nailed i did uh mickey mouse and goofy riding in a tesla and it was it, it was as though disney created it so i think it's important to take a quick step back on xai and grok so we have talked about them on on the show before um but as a reminder so uh Elon Musk started OpenAI with Sam Altman and Greg Brockman and others as a counterbalance to Google's AI efforts and their acquisition of DeepMind, which we're going to talk about next in the next top, um, which Musk was an investor in. So Elon Musk had invested in Google or, or in DeepMind before it was Google DeepMind to stay close to the frontier because he was worried about the risk to humanity if we achieved AGI. He then exited OpenAI in 2019 after trying to roll OpenAI into Tesla and losing a power struggle with Sam Altman. Then on episode 71 of this podcast, November 7th, 2023, so just 10 months ago, uh, they announced the, well, they didn't announce it on our podcast, but we covered the announcement on our podcast that he announced Grok, an AI agent designed to answer any question conversationally. Uh, in their announcement about XAI, uh, they said, Grok is designed to answer questions with a bit of wit and has a rebellious streak, so please don't use it if you hate humor. A unique and fundamental advantage of Grok is that it has real-time knowledge of the world via the X platform. It also can answer spicy questions that are rejected by mo uh, most other AI systems. So from the beginning, they set this precedent that this thing's going to do some stuff that the other ones won't by design. Um, the real-time access to Twitter slash X was you know, the thing that was really differentiating them. Grok is a popular term. We talked about this on the time at the podcast among science fiction fans that was coined in Robert Heinlein's classic sci-fi novel, A Stranger in a Strange Land. Grok basically means to develop a very deep understanding of something. Um, then in May 26th, 2024, so just a few months back, they announced $6 billion Series B round funding at a rumored valuation of $24 billion. So what's that, seven, eight months after its founding, it was valued at $24 billion. 
Um, it, well, it was founded, I guess, in July 2023. They released Grok 1 in November 2023. And then now we have Grok 2. Um, so the, the interesting thing was we talked about Flux last week, as you said, this image generation tool. And we were like, well, but it's kind of hard to use. Well, it's not hard to use anymore because now it's in Grok. So if you're paying your whatever the premium license is on X, 20 bucks or something, you can now do it. Um, it will create anything. Like I asked for images of Taylor Swift and Elon Musk together, Disney, Pixar, other celebrities, politicians, it'll do it all. And it does it in near photo realism for people. And when you ask for Disney and Pixar, it is eerily uh, similar, if not an exact replica of the characters. So now the interesting thing here is, as you mentioned, sort of these the, pushing the limits of free speech, um, some other context. Now, it's not like it's only doing this for Disney. It can do it for anything. I asked for like Transformers, like Optimus Prime meets a Tesla bot and things like that. And it does all that. But Disney in particular, who is notoriously aggressive in protecting its copyrights and trademarks, um, Elon and Bob Iger have a very recent history together. So if you'll recall, back in November of last year um, at the New York Times Deal Book Summit, Disney had pulled their ads from X. So Disney was a big advertiser on X and, and Elon was not happy about this. And at the time, Elon had retweeted something that was viewed by many as being anti-Semitic. And that led to Disney and a bunch of other brands yanking their advertising. Well, Elon, in a fireside chat with Andrew Ross Sorkin, was asked about this, to which Elon, to everyone's shock in the audience, said, if somebody's going to try to blackmail me with advertising, blackmail me with money, go F yourself, go F yourself. Is that clear? I hope it is. Then he appeared to directly call out Disney CEO, Bob Iger by adding, Hey, Bob, if you're in the audience, that's how I feel. Bob was at the event. So Elon was trying to very purposely call out the Disney CEO for yanking advertising. Tesla then yanked Disney plus from their cars. So in, 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 like in the back of a Tesla, you can watch like Netflix and Disney Plus and um, other shows, YouTube. They took Disney Plus out. So, you know, Elon's known to hold a bit of a grudge. So it's not like this is just being done to Disney, but it sure almost feels like he's just baiting Disney to sue him. Like, just go ahead. And I'm sure it's coming. Like, <laughs> they can't allow this to happen. So I don't know where this is going to go, but it does. Uh, you know, it's worth watching. We actually have a main stage session at Macon about IP and generative AI. So this is going to be a hot topic at Macon because you're dealing with copyright infringement issues here with characters from Disney, Pixar and other, you know, uh, creators, trademark violations, right of publicity violations for celebrities, defamation, misrepresentation. All of these are fair game when you put a system like this out there. And Elon is one of the few people who's got the money um, and the personality to sort of take this kind of stuff on and in, in the name of quote unquote free speech in Elon's terms. So it's going to be interesting to watch, but it is it is quite good and it will generate whatever you want it to. It should, should do wonders to raise awareness of people of what these tools are capable of in good and bad ways, it sounds like. Yeah, and I will say also, I've played around with Grok 2 just as a language model, mm -hmm. and it is way better. Like it's, yeah. um, and it's Grok 2 Mini is the one that I have access to as a paid user of X, which is the only reason I'm paying to have X is, um, it is to be able to uh, test these tools. I don't know what, what else you would pay for um since the blue check mark is sort of not worth anything these days so it, it is quite good i mean it, it's it i believe it's supposed to be on par with like a um gpt 3.5 range um and it, it does seem to be there my limited testing 